Hey, you're watching Man That's Cooking. In this video, we're going to show you how to make oven roasted eye round roast. Yes, we're going to make some roast beef today. So there's many different cuts that you can use to make roast beef. And I guess technically if you put any part of a cow into an oven, then you're going to have roast beef. But why is this cut special? Well, it was on sale. So first you want to start out by doing a dry brine and use kosher salt and sprinkle it on all sides of the beef and then wrap it in saran wrap. Refrigerate it overnight and it's going to tenderize it and add flavor. Now you don't have to worry about this making the beef too salty. You're not even really going to notice that. And in fact, we're going to add some salt later when it's time to cook. So after refrigerating for 24 hours, unwrap the beef. Uh, dry it down a little bit, get all the extra salt off the outside if there's any left. And then what we're going to do is take a look at the surface and check for silver skin. So this stuff is pretty chewy. And what we're going to do is take a flexible boning knife like you see here. And just put the blade slightly underneath the surface of that silver skin. And try not to get too deep into the actual beef. And slice it off just like this. Now some of the white stuff you see on here is actually fat and some of it has some silver skin underneath it, some of it doesn't. We're just looking for big pieces of silver skin uh, that'll be easy to cut off. And you might see this uh, fat cap on the bottom. We're going to leave that fat cap on because that's good stuff. But all this little stuff you see here, this is really chewy. Um, I mean, you could leave it on if you want, if you like chewing, um, if you want to give your jawbone a workout, that's fine, that's up to you. Um, but it just takes a few minutes if you want to just cut it off and give yourself a more tender and more delicious piece of meat. Now, of course, you want to be careful of your fingers, and um, this video is sped up, so it makes man look a little bit reckless. Well, I mean, he is, but um, the safest thing to do is just get underneath a little bit of that silver skin, make a tab, and hold on to it, and then just slice the knife underneath, just like that. All right, so let's get this beef seasoned down. First, we're going to add a binder, and so we're going to use some olive oil and rub that in on all sides, and that'll help the seasoning stick to the beef. And then we're going to use some regular black pepper, and that's like a thinner grain, and that's going to lay down nicely onto the beef. Followed by some coarser grain material like kosher salt. And finally, we're going to add some coarse black pepper. Now, you may be thinking, that's a lot of seasoning. And you're right. I mean, it kind of looks that way, doesn't it? But this is going to create a nice outer layer shell or bark and it's going to be fine. It's going to be delicious. So you want to use a skillet, preferably a cast iron skillet, and have it on medium high heat. You want to use a teaspoon of oil, your favorite oil, olive oil. And when that oil starts to smoke, it's time to start cooking. And we're going to put this beef on the fat cap side down first. This is going to cook for at least three minutes, maybe five. We're going to cook it to color. And the reason why we're doing fat cap first is it's going to melt some of that fat and that fat's going to hang out in the pan and that's going to be some flavor added to the other sides. So while you're doing this, you want to preheat your oven to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Now something that you want to keep in mind here are your smoke detectors. So there's a really good chance that browning this beef in the pan the way we're doing it here will kick off your smoke detectors. And you want to have your windows open. Turn on any fans that you might have nearby. And if you have one of those above the range hoods with a fan in it, or one of those microwaves that's above the range, kick that fan on high. But, well, if you don't do that and the fire department shows up, let us know in the comment section. So, just because, we're also going to brown the ends. I mean, you don't have to, but. It just makes it look cool when it's all the same color. 
And by the way, if you're wondering why we're doing this step, this is flavoring right here. So this is the Maillard reaction in action, and it's going to add a lot of complex flavorings, and you're going to love it. Now you could make a gravy out of all the juices that are left behind. There's a good chance it's a little salty with all of the uh, seasonings that were on the beef. Uh, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going to continue with cooking this beef here. So man's transferred this to a roasting pan, although that's totally unnecessary. Probably could have used that cast iron skillet. And there's a temperature probe inserted right down the center. And the alarm is going to be set at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's when we're going to shut off the oven. And look at that. After all those minutes of browning the beef, it's only 54 degrees. Pretty cool, huh? So the alarm is going off at 115, and you want to turn the oven off. Next, you're going to increase the alarm to 130. Do not, do not, do not open the oven. Do not open the oven until the beef reaches 130 and the alarm goes off. Because every time you open the oven door, you let out heat, and if the oven's off, you're not going to reheat that oven. So get yourself a wired or wireless thermometer. You're going to need one for this recipe. If you don't have one, you're an adult now. Go get one. And take a look at this. Does that look good? Looks pretty brown. That's flavor brown. So let's slice in and see what we got. All right, man's got the electric knife so he can contribute to global warming simply by using a knife. Boo! But hey, take a look at these slices. That's looking pretty good. I mean, starting to make me a little hungry. How about you? So this looks like it came out pretty good. It's a nice pink color and looks really tender. Very juicy for sure. And it's got a little bit of a seasoning crust or bark on the outer ring of each slice. And you can see that perfectly browned flavor on the outer edge. So all you need now is some gravy and some mashed potatoes. Or maybe some horseradish sauce. Or maybe you want to make some sandwiches out of this. Either way, this is a pretty simple recipe. There's not a lot of work involved. And whenever you see this cut on sale at your local market, pick it up and make this recipe. Because look at that. Oh yeah. Does that look good or what? And it sure looks bloody, but uh, this is definitely cooked through here. Or just a little pink on the inside, just how it's supposed to be. So uh, I guess that's pink juice then coming out. Food, Food porn, porn flyover. flyover. Take a look at that. Doesn't that look good? So hey, thanks for watching this video. If you like it, click like, click subscribe, check out our website, manthatscooking.com. We've got plenty of other recipes for you to try out. Let us know in the comment section if you're going to try this out or if you have any questions about this recipe. Thanks for watching.